Would you believe me if I told you that this show isn't actually about tech news? No? Okay, good, because that's not true. It, it is about tech news. <clears throat> Sorry to confuse you. Intel's Compute Stick was actually surprisingly cool when it launched, but now the company is taking stick-based computing to the next level. Intel just launched the Movidius Neural Compute Stick, a USB stick that promises to give deep neural network processing capabilities to any PC you plug it into. The Compute Stick houses a Myriad 2 Vision Processing Unit, or VPU, the same one used in the DJI Phantom 4 and other small devices, which provides more than 100 gigaflops of performance while using only one watt of power. You can even get a USB hub and plug in multiple sticks to give your laptop or Raspberry Pi or whatever enough brain power to finally start achieving its lifelong dream of killing all humans and setting up an AI apocalypse. <sighs> Make dreams come true. The Movidial Brain Thinking Stick. By now. Late last year, Google shut down Project Aura, its initiative to build a modular phone, crushing the dreams of many who hope to one day assemble smartphones like Lego, including me. But it looks like Facebook might be picking up where Google left off. The social media giant just filed a patent for a type of modular device that could potentially serve as a phone and smart speaker. The device is reportedly being developed at Facebook's Building 8, an incubator for cutting edge tech projects, the leader of which is Regina Dugan, the former director of both DARPA and Google's Advanced Technology and Project Group, or ATAP, which developed Project Aura. I'm sounding a bit like a conspiracy theorist, but the evidence is all there. The dream of modular phones being kept alive is great, but let's just hope it doesn't turn out like Facebook's first phone. Some Verizon wireless users have reported throttled internet speeds while using Netflix and YouTube. Reddit posts pointed to speeds on the two video services being limited to 10 megabits per second on Verizon networks, while regular speed tests using Ookla showed full speeds. When asked for a comment by Ars Technica, Verizon said the results are likely due to the company's network testing to optimize video performance, and 10 megabits per second is actually enough to stream 1080p video. That is true, but as some publications are pointing out, 4K video quality was suffer, and there was no warning to customers of the cap before they enacted it. But Horizon appears to be within their rights to do this, as ISPs throttling certain services is permissible for testing purposes under the current net neutrality rules, which the FCC is attempting to roll back. We'll have to see where this story goes, but for now, let's take a moment to consider a future where we're all capped at 10 megabits. Oh. I didn't like that. That's time for quick bits! <laughs> Seems like everybody wouldn't shut up about wearables a year or two ago, and now Intel has shut down their division focused on wearable tech. Smartwatches are now dumb. I'm the worst, I'm sorry. In other Intel news, the company is accusing Qualcomm of abusing its monopoly on mobile processors using anti-competitive tactics, which made it hard for Intel to stay in that market. Which is funny, because Intel was fined $1.4 billion for doing the same thing to AMD in 2014. Delta Airlines will now accept fingerprints in place of a boarding pass at the Regan Washington National Airport, which isn't scary at all. Nor are LG's robots at the Incheon International Airport in South Korea, which will guide you to the proper terminal and also clean the floor. Why is this thing so much bigger than a Roomba, though? It's hiding something. Images of the Asus ROG Zenith Extreme have appeared on the web, the first X399 motherboard for AMD's Ryzen Threadripper CPUs. It sure does look like a motherboard, that's for sure. And a fancy one. And an exploit was discovered in the Source game engine that would allow hackers to take control of your computer by killing you in a Source-powered game like Counter-Strike GO or Team Fortress 2. But after being informed of the exploit, Valve patched it within a day, so while they might not be working hard on Half-Life 3, at least they're doing something. Doesn't make me feel better. Sources for all of today's news stories can be found in the NCIX forum post linked in the description. Uh, yeah. Games. Thanks for the submission. Ah, uh, yeah, games. If the rest of you want us to say something on Netlinked, hashtag NCIX Yodog is a hashtag on Twitter for you. In case you didn't know, every month we give away a new prize to our subscribers. We call it Fans with Benefits, because if you're going to put up with our cringy jokes, you might as well get something out of it. And the prize for July is a gigabyte 
This thing, Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 7 motherboard. It's technically last gen, but Intel's latest gaming processors, the i7-7700K and 7600K, do still work with Z170. I talked about that a bit in my Z170 versus Z270 video. But regardless, you can enter to win this just by subscribing to NCIX Tech Tips and commenting on any video in July. We announce the winners on the first netlink of the next month, which I believe is Tuesday, August 1st. So, see you then. And wouldn't you know it, that's the end of this Netlink Daily episode. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Click over here for previous videos. Check us out on Twitter over there. But as always, like the video if you liked it, comment below for fans with benefits, and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX. And I'll see you later. Actually, I'll see you on Monday. Or tomorrow, I think, because I got another video going up. But when I say later, that encapsulates both of those options. So see you later.